I like technology. I really do. I enjoy using it, reading about it, learning about it. I like computers. I like iPads. I like the convenience of tablets, of smart TVs. I just think all that stuff is so incredible. Uh, you get information. You get education. It's right at your fingertips. You have connections to people. You have memory again. My memory had failed, but I can save things in my phone and it'll remind me to do stuff. So I don't miss doctor's appointments. I love all, and it's free. I mean, once you've made the purchase, of course, I can just get on the internet and I can study anything I want to study and it's free. But why is it free? Because we all know nothing's free, right? Well, we've all been amazed by the ads that come to us when we're online, haven't we? And how well connected they are to us. Isn't, isn't that kind of eerie sometimes? If I search on market, Facebook Marketplace for a table saw, then what am I going to see for the next two weeks? In the banners along the side of the screen, as pop-up ads, I'm going to see... Uh, ads from Rockler Woodworking, and I'm going to see ads for sales that are being had for, for power tools, uh, for do-it-yourself sites where you can study how to do things yourself, how to use those tools, shop designs, just all kinds of things pop up. But what's even more eerie is when you discuss something with the friend, you don't look it up on the internet, and within minutes, you pull out an electronic device and an ad comes up for what you were talking about. And it happens too often to just be a random chance. I know my phone's listening. Because if I say, hey Siri, it asks me what I want. Some of the television companies have admitted that their TVs are constantly listening and what's being said is being recorded for a third party group to analyze and give feedback to them on what it is that you want in your life. That's a little unnerving. When I sit down at my computer screen, I don't think about these kind of things though. I sit down there and I think I'm in control. I'm going to tell this thing what I want and it's going to provide it for me. I'm the consumer and I'm going to look for what I want and I'm going to get it. But I've recently learned that in fact, I'm not the consumer, I'm the product. That sounds weird, doesn't it? Well, when an ad for a motorcycle pops up, I'm probably going to click on it, just so you know. And I'm going to admire that shiny new motorcycle and I'm going to think about how that would fit in my budget and in my garage and in my life so that I had time to ride it. And I'm going to spend some time dwelling on that and then I'm probably going to go on. But when I do that, Honda pays Facebook because I clicked on that ad. And Facebook provides to Honda all the information they've collected about me. And that's how those ads end up on your screen. So I'm being sold by Facebook to Honda. That's eerie enough until you think about the weaknesses that we have in our lives and the things that we might click on in a moment of weakness that we shouldn't even be looking at. And that information is recorded and sold also. But for the most part, it's not a bad thing. The ads I get on the side of my screen are things I'm interested in. I mean, that's better than me getting ads of little girls' dresses, right? I mean, I have no interest in that, so it doesn't do anything for me. But how many of you think Satan is aware of this technology? You think he knows that's available? I do. As a matter of fact, I suspicion he's driving it. Because everything on that computer that's being hyped, you might say, is being used to attack me financially, morally, socially, politically, maybe some other ways you can think of. We're under attack. You say, wow, Vernon, that's a negative outlook for you. You're not usually that way. Well, that's true. 
But we all have weaknesses, don't we? We have financial weaknesses. We have moral weaknesses, political weaknesses, social weaknesses, all kinds of them. So think about this. When I sit down there at that computer screen and I think I'm in charge, what's on the other side of the screen? Another computer, right? Or a thousand computers. I don't really know. Maybe millions. And they're all programmed to try to figure out what it is in my life so that they can make money off of me. That's their goal. Do you think about the fact that you're sitting down across from your enemy that's analyzing and tracking every bit of your existence online? Not only is my enemy in my house, I bought it. And I put it there, and I sit down face to face with it to tell it things every day. I must be pretty dumb, huh? And it knows what tempts me. It knows what interests me. It knows what distracts me. It knows what angers me. It, or Satan, if you choose, uses these things to cause us to sin, doesn't it? It uses it to distract me from other things I ought to be doing and to take up my time. It arouses strong feelings that alter the way we behave towards one another, doesn't it? Thus, Satan brings division between us and other Christians. Between us and the church. Between us and our family members. Between us and our friends. Between us and potential Christians. Potential believers. That we've already angered before we ever meet them. If Satan can't get us to sin... He weakens our support system. He damages our relationships. He destroys our congregation. At the very least, He dims our light. And He limits our ability to reach out with the gospel to other people. Satan has gotten us to divide over the simplest of things. We now divide over whether or not to wear a mask. And we judge one another based on our personal health decisions. You ever wonder why the internet is always bringing up articles that support what you already believe? It's programmed to do that. It knows what you want. It knows what you like. And it's going to feed your position to strengthen you in it and to divide us even more. And so we have these things that we disagree about. And neither side's exactly right. We know that. Neither side is exactly right. But we divide over it anyway. We get disgruntled with each each other. And we speak ill of each other. And though we would never admit it, we base whether or not we fellowship somebody on it or at least the amount of time we spend fellowshipping them, don't we? So we judge each other based on vaccinations, masks, safety procedures, homeschool versus public school, private school, whether or not you're involved in sports, U.S. products versus foreign-made products, how to solve discrimination, homelessness, and any number of other things. We, We align ourselves into camps And we're annoyed by people that don't agree with us on these things. And that computer controls us. Now you might say, Vernon, my Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I can sit in front of that computer and Christ's on my side and it's not going to control me. Or you might say that He protects me. He says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation has overtaken you, but is common to man. God is faithful and He will not allow you to be tempted beyond your ability. He promised that, didn't He? So, 
I can sit down there and I'm safe because Christ is going to protect me, right? <laughs> you know what that sounds like to me? It sounds like you're standing in the door of an airplane that's 20,000 feet in the air and you're getting ready to jump out and you take your chute off and you throw it back in the plane and you say, I don't need that. The Lord will protect me. You know, if we look at those scriptures a little closer, that's not what they teach. In context, Philippians scripture that we talked about is actually teaching that we need to be content in times of need. That's all Paul is saying in that. I've learned to be with wealth and without wealth. And I can do either one with the Lord looking out for me. And the one about He won't allow you to be tempted, He goes on to say, but with the temptation, we'll also provide a way of escape. So what's the way of escape? Well, step away from the door or put your shoot back on. <laughs> what's the way of escape with this spy that we've got living in our living rooms? Or we're wearing it on our belt or carrying it in our pocket. Well, I've got a few suggestions. I'm sure you can think of more on your own, but I would like you to think about it. That We need to be more careful about these things. I guess you could just throw it in the trash, couldn't you? <laughs> that would work. Unplug it, put it in the trash can, it'll be picked up tomorrow. But that's not likely going to happen. It's pretty embedded in our life, isn't it? And we use it daily for good purposes. Some of us earn our living by the use of the computer, so that's not liable to happen. What can we do? Well, first of all, you can limit accessibility. It sounds like something you do to your kids, right? Which I did when we were younger, didn't we? <laughs> Limited amount of television time. Only allowed so much a day. Um, so we did that sort of thing. You need to do it for yourself, too. Maybe you just take your phone when you walk in the house and you put it on the charger. Wherever you do that, in the kitchen or in the bedroom. And then you go about your business. You can still go check that phone anytime you want, but you have to get up and go stand where it is to check it. I bet we wouldn't check it near as often, would we? Do you just do it without even thinking about it? I do. I, the moment, if I'm bored for 10 seconds, I get my phone out and turn the screen on. What's happening in the world? I need to know. With many of the smartphones today, you can set limits on the amount of data or the amount of screen time. I think that's made for us to control our children. Maybe we need to control ourselves. Maybe we're children. <laughs> maybe if you have a social media app that's really your problem, maybe you ought to take it off your phone. I'm not saying get rid of it. You can still have your Facebook account. But if it's controlling your life or angering you to the point of sin, maybe you should just eliminate it from the device that's in your pocket all day long and make it so you have to go sit at the computer if you want to look at that. If you find yourself going places you shouldn't go on the Internet, there's software you can buy and you can allow someone you trust to control it, and it will stop you from going to those places that you shouldn't go. If you're serious about serving the Lord, you can do that. Recently, I used the term clickbait up here, and I was told a couple of you didn't know what that was. So education's free here. We don't charge extra for that. But don't click on it. When it comes up on your feed and you click on it, you have just sharpened Satan's sword. You have told him exactly what's in your heart and exactly what interests you and exactly what distracts you from what you were doing. So don't click on it. Resist that as much as you can so that he has to guess what he's coming after you with. I would also suggest on social media that you block people. If you're a person that thinks you're always right and you tend to get arrogant about it and it damages your relationship, then block the people that are firing you up and feeding you the information that causes those reactions. If you have a tendency towards racism, 
Stop following the people that are feeding that. You know who they are. You know what programs, you know what bloggers are the ones that are causing that reaction in you. So stop following them. Lastly, feed your soul instead. Maybe instead of more Facebook time, more Bible time, more prayer time. Spend time encouraging, serving, worshiping, and you won't have as much time to be caught up in those things that drag us down. The Lord warned us that we like to point out the flaws in other people, didn't He? And He said, I'm the one with the log in my eye. So maybe we all need to go home and just work on the log that's in our own eye and not worry about the other people in the world that annoy us so much.